let's stop predicting and start reversal following. Okay. Many of us try to predict what the markets do, and we don't really have a plan. And you really need to have a plan. Now, some strategies, not all strategies work for everything. Some strategies only work now and then. And it's not that they only work now and then. It's the setup only appears now and then. And you should have a strategy for every different type of market. If you, know, if you see this appearing, you should apply that strategy. If you see that appearing, you should apply that strategy. And reversal following is one of the best strategies to trade from, although it doesn't appear or doesn't set up that often, but when it does set up and you set up everything and, and everything's fitting all the rules, you have a very high probability trade. Now remember, trading does not go as smoothly for the retail crowd as it does for professional traders. And you and I are all the retail crowd. But to name a few reasons, it's the size of capital and the access to information, and ultimately it's leverage. You know, when you buy a hundred thousand shares of Google and you buy it with your ten million dollar uh, account that you have cash for, and Google goes down a little, you don't have to close it out because you've lost a million dollars. You because you own it, you have the cash, you can ride it till the market goes in your favor, or till later today when it blimps in your right direction. We don't have that luxury. Most of us, maybe we can use our leverage and get 100 shares of Google, maybe 200 shares of Google, or you know, X, Y, and Z stock. And if X, Y, and Z stock, for some reason, suddenly drops in the middle of the day, we're forced to close out our trade because we can't afford to have that loss. Can't afford to take the risk because we're leveraged. So that means we're taking, we, we're ending up with a loss. Okay. Even though the stock later in the day turns around and does exactly what you thought it would be. But we are at a disadvantage of being part of the retail crowd as opposed to the professional traders. Now, unfortunately, most retail traders fail in Forex trading with estimates putting the numbers of successful retail traders just in two to 5%. That means the other 95 to 98% of traders ultimately lose in the wilderness of the exchange rate fluctuations. Now, that doesn't mean without smarts and intelligence and plans that you can't be successful. So if you've probably been trading for more than a week, you probably asked yourself these questions multiple times, but how do you actually determine when to enter a trade? While things like trade management, exit strategies, and discipline are also big contributing factors towards your performance, picking a good entry point will increase your chances of having a winning trade on your hands. Now what happens is many of us wait too long to enter a trade. We're looking for too much confirmation or many of us try to predict the markets and let our emotions take us away. But first, as a good trader, you need to understand the four stages of the markets. Every market has it. So understanding the stages that the markets go through is crucial when trading the financial markets. The cycle is unique and each stage has its own driving factors. And these driving factors help you determine what strategy you might want to employ in this particular cycle. So we have four phases of the cycle, and they're called accumulation, markup, distribution, and markdown. During the accumulation phase, let me back up for a second before we get into this. If you're a firm believer, like myself, that markets can only move in three directions. They can move up, they can move down, or they can move in a sideways congested mess. Now, Unfortunately, most of the time, the markets are moving in a sideways congested mess. When markets are moving up or they're moving down, 
we can see this, and these we call trends. If you believe that the markets are completely random and price is completely random, there are certain times that the market exhibits non-random behavior. And when we can see this non-random behavior, we can make intelligent trading decisions. So with the first stage of a market, we go through the process of accumulation. The accumulation stage is driven by large institutional demand. It's not us, it's not you and me. The result of this phase is the buyers are slowly gaining traction in the market, eventually pushing up the market price. The phases where the, bill, the bulls build up their authority. Price action is relatively flat, creating a ranging market structure within a zone, support and resistance within a structure of higher lows, given that price action signals that the market is in this stage. This is when it's starting to come out of that sideways action mess. So we go through phase one as the accumulation phase. We have lots of sideways action, but we can start to see that that the that the market is starting to make a decision. From this mark then this accumulation phase, we go into what's called the markup phase. In this markup phase, the second phase within the trading cycle is the markup. This is where buyers take over to gain the traction they intend on gains in the first phase. This is the beginning of an uptrend or a downtrend. Price is pushed through the upper resistance level of the trading range. Candles start to close with strong bullish bodies, sending a signal that price is entering the second stage. In this stage, there's an emerging bullish trend in price. So we're moving from this sideways action. And this is where we can start to see bulls pushing up, they can't, they can't accumulate anything. Push up, but then they fall. Bulls try again, can't get anyone. They try again, can't get anyone. They finally try one last time and they break out of this resistance zone. And this is where we go into the markup phase. The markup phase is this climb, and it's not necessarily one minute, it's not necessarily one hour, it's not necessarily one day, it could be a week, it could be a couple hours, it could be a couple candles. And then from here we go into what's called the distribution phase. The distribution phase starts when some of those people who got in at the accumulation phase have started to close their positions because they've made their profit, they've reached their target points. So the next phase involves a distribution process where the sellers are attempting to take back their position in the markets. Like the accumulation phase, price action on the chart becomes flat. We then move into this sideways congested mess that we have, a flat market. And then from there, we move into a, dist into a final markdown phase, and that is really the reversal. And when you look at your charts, and whether you're looking at a short-term chart or long, you have to say to yourself, what type of market I am, am I in? What phase of this market I'm in? Because this is gonna help you decide what type of strategy might work well for you at, in this particular part of this cycle. And we're not talking about these long market cycles, we're talking about just the phases that the market's going in. You should know where you stand. Because to be honest, when you're in a markup phase, this is where your buying action should be. When you're in distribution phase, you shouldn't be doing anything. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna answer one person's question, okay? I am not here 
to personally answer your questions about what you think is going to happen in the markets. I'm here teaching a class that's got very specifics. Okay, if you are not interested in what we're teaching tonight and you just want to ask all your personal questions, I would advise you to contact Elvexo and talk to a financial analyst. Tonight, we're talking about a specific class on a specific thing. And I would appreciate it if you stop writing in all these questions in the question window that are irrelevant to this tonight's class. I'm sorry, guys, but sometimes people go overboard the wrong way. Now, there are different setups depending on price action, understanding what market phase we are in. And we have to be aware of these. We also need to be aware of what type of market we're in. Now today, we're going to be looking at a reversal trade setup. Not because it's got anything to do with necessarily today's market. We can't learn a zillion trade setups in one class. So we have many different kinds, but which one would you want to play? When would you use it? So let's go look at the reversal trade setup. Trading reversals is a very popular trading style. The fact of CFD trading, it is one of the most popular strategies used. And I know a lot of people want to have these charts that have a million things on them. They want to say, they want to sit at the bar tonight and tell their buddies, hey, yeah, but when my MACD crossed over and I had an interface with my RSI and my RSI, you know, was diverged with my stochastics while I saw this type of candle developing while this thing was happening. Well, you know what? That's all a bunch of nonsense. It's a bunch of gobbledygook. Have you ever walked in, especially a fine dining restaurant, and you look at the menu, and you're just going to order a steak and fry, a steak and, and potatoes. And you look at it, and it's got, doesn't have steak. It's got some long name of some kind of bull that they're raised from, and it's got all of these, I mean, they've made this menu for, I just want steak and potatoes. You know, it's got blue crusted this under the mustachio, this, you know, with the, 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 it's like the, the chef just wanted to fill in how many words he could write. I just want a steak and potato. The same thing with your strategies. When you get so complex and so involved, you know, one ingredient isn't there. You haven't matched your menu. Trade setups are easy. You're looking for something simply to tell you you have a trading opportunity and where you have this trading opportunity and what price you want to trade it at. So trading reversals is very popular. Traders tend to finish for, tend to wish for picking the exact bottom or the top and catching a strong reversal. One of the issues is that reversals are not that common. As I mentioned to you before, a good setup doesn't happen quite it doesn't happen that often. It means it needs several factors for it to actually be a particular setup. But when it does, it gives you a very high probability trade. So another challenge is that trading reversals requires more position, more precision than trading, say, a trend setup. When people hear you that you trade reversals, they immediately believe that you try to predict a change in direction. Or following, or follow the catching of a knife, falling knife trading approach. No, we don't. We're not trying to catch the very bottom. We're not trying to catch the very top. We're not hoping and praying that a trend reverses. Not doing anything. We're looking for some spare, very specific things to happen on a chart. It's important to understand that reversal trading is not a trading style that predicts whether markets are going to turn or try to trade the absolute high or low. But that reversal trading can and should be something very different. 
The best reversal trades don't predict, but they wait for a clear sign that the market has already turned. Reversal trading then moves away from the price predicting to the price following, and how I like to call it is reversal following. Trading or building an edge is all about stacking the odds in your favor. However, it's important to focus on what's important to you and avoid paralysis by analysis, which exists when you add so many tools and indicators, rules and price filters to your method that make a trading decision become so complicated. In fact, the market's over by the time you've made your decision. Now, personally, I don't use any indicators. I use price action on my chart, support and resistance chart pattern. That's it for me. And I read my candle. I read the story of price action with candles. I don't memorize candlestick patterns. I don't try to find bullish engulfing and bearish engulf. I don't try to throw in flea black. I want to be able to look at my price chart and read what my price is trying to tell me. So when it comes to your trading methodology, ask yourself what you want to achieve and what the premise of your system is, and then pick the tools accordingly. If you are a trend follower, you want to look for high momentum movements, preferably a break of support or resistance, with a lot of room and support of the higher time frame direction and of the fundamentals. If you're a reversal trade, you want to look for fading momentum, support and resistance areas that can't be broken, and price confirmations of shifting powers between bulls and bears. So let's pop up some live charts before I go on with too many words here and you get bored silly with me. Okay. Now, here's a very simple trading system that somebody sent me. Okay. And they're using MACD, RSI, support and resistance and chart patterns. Well, it's a simplistic system. But again, I told you, I don't use I don't use technical, I, I don't use indicators. Now, here we go with a very little system. We use volume, support and resistance, chart patterns, and we read what price is trying to tell us on our charts. Again here, same thing, very, easy system okay we look for what price is doing what it's done at the last support and resistance and in this case we would have had a beautiful trade setup a reversal trade setup when price was stuck between these support and resistance level and finally collapsed out of it what is it going into it actually turned into the markdown phase we were in a distribution phase we went into a markdown phase. And look from that markdown phase, what we went into here. We went into the accumulation phase. So when we were in this distribution phase, and then we went into the markdown phase, I would have known exactly what phase I was going into. And I would have known exactly where to start applying my trade setup because I saw all the price stuck between my support and resistance. And then I saw this reversal. I saw the markets finish and fall below that resistance level, and I saw it moving down. Perfect setup for the reversal following setup. Now, what do we look for exactly in a reversal follow, trade follow? We look for trading. Trading and building an edge is all about stacking the odds in your favor. So when it comes to your trading methodology, what system do we want to have? So if you're a reversal trader, you're looking for fading momentum and support and resistance areas that couldn't be broken and price confirmation of shifting powers between the bulls and the bears. So fading momentum is important. Now you can get fading momentum 
from a particular momentum indicator like RSI or stochastics. But you could get fading momentum as our candles get smaller in body and our volume starts to decline. And the last main pillar of the reversal strategy is to find reversals that happen at a logical point. You know, we're not trying to make things, we're not trying to make things up. The markets are sensible, okay? What do we see on our charts? We saw price staying in between known support and resistance levels and then breaking below a major resistance level. Okay. Nothing complex about it. Most traders make the mistake that they just look for a divergence on their indicators or then they hope for the trade will somehow work out. You know, they're sitting back looking for their drop in momentum in their MACD or their RSI or stochastics. Trading reversals that happen at the right price is key. For that, you should start looking for false breaks of support and resistance levels or previous highs and lows. Fibonacci's are another go-to tool. Here we have our Fibonacci levels. Now, where are we going here? Accumulation phase. Markup phase. Distribution phase. markdown phase. Okay. In this point here, we're going through accumulation. We've got our Fibonacci's, or I like Fibs, but I much prefer eyeballing and building. I, I never trade without support and resistance on my charts, and my support and resistance have been drawn back to God knows how many years ago and they just extend forward. No, well, you have to keep adding them, like the Euro's trading in, in levels that it hasn't traded. Oh, and God, I don't think it's ever reached, I and mean, when it reached 99, I don't think it's ever reached. So we had to put new support and resistance levels on our charts. But once you have them on there, they extend forward, and any time the price is in this area again, those levels become valid, and they're already on your charts. So hold on, let's take a look. Okay, so we can see all of these red, yellow, gold, green dash and dotted lines are my support and resistance levels for the Euro that were drawn on. Now, mine, I have color codes, I have color keys. I know what these dots, the dashes, the colors. Now, you can see that I've recently added because the Euro's never been at this level, but I couldn't go back two years ago and add this level on because price had, but I used my eyeballs and came up with the strategic price of 100027 or say $1. And see how important that was price fell, bounced off the $1, came back up, tried to tackle it again. So we know this $1 and we know already that it's a crucial level to the euro. Yes, it broke through it. So then we got a new solid level, which is the lowest point the euro has been at 99.47. And then here we have another strategic level, but they're in green now. Because to me, they're to my greens telling me that they're short term, more recent levels that have been put on my charts. They're not back from historic prices. But by knowing where I sit, okay, and where do I sit? Markdown, accumulation, markup, distribution. So where am I going back into? I'm going to go into a markdown phase. Now, understanding that, I'm looking for the market's price to drop. I've also got a key price level here. And that's one of the important things that we need to know. Okay, because we wouldn't be looking for a reversal trade setup at this point. We need to see that price will break it. Sorry, my marker doesn't want to turn off here. There we go. 
So if all of these things come together, you often get a very precise signal of an imminent market reversal. Furthermore, by the time you see all three things on your charts, price will have already turned into the opposite direction and reversal predicting becomes reversal anticipation. Okay, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Most traders who claim to be reversal traders are just trying to call tops and bottoms and predict markets turns well in advance. Successful reversal traders enter way after the top or the bottom is formed. To trade reversals properly, you must be okay with watching your setup unfold while you are standing on the sidelines and waiting for the perfect moment. Like we looked on that chart, too many traders would have been sitting there looking for a sell position. And the minute it broke that support level, or resistance, or that significant price level, they would have been selling into the market. Or a lot of people would have said, ah, it's gonna bounce back up and go down up to the next resistance level, the next support level, the next price level. And they would have been buying because they're just sitting on the side and they don't wanna sit and watch the markets unfold. They wanna predict. So how do we do this? Step one is to determine if the market condition is favorable for a reversal trading setup strategy. So, well, think about this. If this is a reversal trends trading strategy, right? This means we must wait until the end of the trend before entering a trade trend reversal. We won't be able to get into the high probability reversal movement until that happens. Now, what happens if we execute trades when the rules of engagement of the strategy were not met without considering the market conditions or location. Well, we will end up executing trades and trends and consolidations, right? Well, this is a quick way to blow your trading account. This is why trade location is important. What you should be, what would be the ideal marketing condition or location for a trading setup? To understand that first, you must understand the four markets, the four market cycles. So we need to understand what market cycle we're in. So remember, we discussed this earlier. We had the accumulation phase and the markup stage. Okay. During the markup stage is when we wanna be buying, during a markdown stage, we wanna be selling, but we have to wait for these to actually take place. By seeing these, we can then determine exactly where we sit in the markets. So once the first step is done, you now have to identify the correct market conditional location, which has a higher probability for a market reversal. With that, let's go to step two, identifying the weakness in the current trends. Now this is rule-based and easy way to do it. Previously, you identified the higher probability areas for possible market reversals. Now it's time to identify if there is a possibility for a market reversal in the same area. In this step, we are going to identify the weakness in the current trend so that we can prevent from getting caught in a retracement. And that's starts saying, how do we not, when it's a simple retracement, price is coming down, going to bounce back up and retrace to continue the trend up. So how are we gonna do that? Well, this is sometimes you might wanna use RSI. Okay. I don't believe in divergence at all. Okay. But if you take a two hour time frame and divergence, okay. I, mean, I never see divergence and I don't think divergence has a very beginning point and an end point. But keep that in mind, this is a step-by-step -step process. Therefore, if we have to need to identify a four hour overbought or oversold, then at the same area, we need to find if there's any RSI divergence. Now, here we are on a four hour chart. Now, the fact is, yes, we had divergence in our RSI. That means RSI is going up price is doing nothing, it's not even going down here. But 
I don't care about divergence. What I care about is I'm in my distribution phase and now I've moved to my markdown phase. If I look at it in a shorter term chart, in a two hour chart, I can see more precisely distribution, markdown. Now we're going to look for a shift in momentum. So first, what is a momentum shift? Momentum shift is when the price shows strong opposite momentum against the current trend. When this happens, we call it a shift in momentum. What is momentum? Well, if you fired a rocket into the sky or a firework in the sky, it's going to travel up and up and up and up. At some point, it's going to start losing its speed. And we can, if we were scientists, with all the right calibrations material, we could probably, probably predict at what point would the rocket start losing its momentum. But we have no guarantee because some days the sun is shining brighter, so the, the air is lighter. Sometimes there's a gust of wind. Some, you know, there's all other factors that come into play. But it is when the movement in one direction or another is starting to lose its, doesn't mean it's gonna flip over at this point, but it's starting to lose its speed. So this uptrend is slowly losing its momentum. Therefore, we can expect a bearish reversal. To be exact during the uptrend, when the price breaks below the 50 SMA, we can call it a bearish momentum shift, or we can have another way to look at this. A moving average is a very good, simple way to do it. When price below breaks below the moving average in an uptrend, we see a shift in momentum. But now there's one condition. That is price action to respect the 50 SMA. To find that you may need to switch between a two hour and a one hour time frame. For example, if the price action respects the 50 SMA on a two hour time frame, then no need to switch down to a one hour time frame. If not, you must switch down to a one hour time frame. Note that the lowest time frame we are switching to is one hour. Don't go below that. To understand this, you have to look at the charts. This is the same chart we previously used. So we wanna look for that shift in momentum. So let's break down the chart using the steps we've learned so far. Okay, I'm sorry. We're looking first to identify the type of market we're in, where we sit in the market phase. Then we're trying to look at our support and resistance levels and see if we have a strategic price point. And then we wanna look for the break in that price point. You wanna look for a shift in momentum, which you could be using an indicator for, or you wanna look for a drop below the, the 50 point moving average. So now we finally get up to the side, okay, we have a buy or sell opportunity here. We haven't executed, we haven't done anything. We're just looking. So it's in this step that we start talking about trade entries, stop loss and take profits. When talking about trade entry, we need an entry method with a higher probability and a maximum profit potential. So how do we achieve this? Well, we're going to use the most profitable reversal chart pattern to increase our odds in our favor and to cut the losses upon the trade entry. When the market is not reversing the way we want, we will use it to cut our loss methods. So we wanna look for a reversal pattern. Okay. 
We can use that through MACD. We can use the structure levels. I don't use head and shoulders. I don't use triple bottoms and triple tops. So the best way for me is the structure, support and resistance. But we can look at our candles and look for the candles telling us something's important. Not memorizing a pattern. Look at the shift in the, the body of the candle, the length of the wicks of the candle, and where those candles are reacting to your support and resistance levels. So simple, after identifying the reversal chart pattern, and we see a dive of momentum, we would want to look for an entry point and a, and a sell stop order, which would be a few steps below that. So again, it's simple. We, ju we just must calculate the distance of the mark zone and place to stop was twice that distance. For example, if the distance of the zone is 15 pips, then your stop loss should be a 30 pips. If you look at the above chart, you'll notice that we did the same thing by placing a stop loss twice as big as the zone. We have to use our take profit, which we would use four times our stop loss. So that would give us our risk reward ratio to see if we can even completely make this trade. So we want to isolate our entry point. Our entry point would be where we got the confirmation of breaking that resistance level, breaking that strategic price level, and at what price it broke it. We would use that price level for our entry point, stop loss, double the distance down, take profit four times up, and now we have our trade set up. So it's just some things to think about. Okay. So thank you very much for joining us tonight and use your own brain to figure things out. Take in the information and use it. Don't wait for somebody to give you five steps. Do this, do this, do this, do that, and make a trade. Because you'll never get it right. Because the person who gave you those five steps, their brain is calculating a million things in between. They just haven't given them to you. It's for you to understand what the market's telling you, what the price is telling you, and for you to build your, your strategy. So we have the reversal trade setup. Simple strategy, five steps. Look at where we sit in the market. Look at our important price levels. Look for where the market breaks those price levels. And then how do we determine and use your volume of confirmation? So that's it for tonight. Thank you very much and have a great trading day. Bye now.